Kids, in today's video I'm going to talk to you about how I painted the Scarab Occult, this unit that is part of the Thousand Sons Army for Warhammer 40k. So this is a commission that I have done for someone, a friend of mine, that's located in the UK. So this one is for you, Matt. Wonderful guy. So these were done to a gaming standard. He wanted these painted, uh, you know, a nice tabletop. That's what he got nice and clean and everything at least that was also the goal anyway when painting these also what I'm going to show you is basically uh, people like from what I was told uh, about videos where I explain how I paint stuff especially because I get into the zone when I start getting into painting stuff but also if you want to check out the process as I went along there are broadcasts of these up on Twitch. So if you want to catch them while they're still up, just catch us at twitch.tv slash metalheadminis, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you about what colors I used and people like when I explain how I paint stuff because it helps them pick up some tips and tricks along the way and it also gives people some product suggestions. So what should I use if I want to do this or what have you, okay? So to start, and I just forgot about a paint color that I had to pull out, so let me grab that real quick. Okay, got it? Alright, cool. So anyways, so the main color that I used for the turquoise, it is GW Citadel color in Temple Guard Blue, which I transferred to a dropper bottle a long time ago, so don't, ex don't get excited. Citadel does not come in dropper bottles, okay? So that's what I used was the Temple Guard Blue. And then for the gold, I used Retributor Armor. When I prepped and primed these models, I actually used the Retributor Gold, the Retributor Armor Spray. Okay, so that's what I sprayed them in first. I felt for me that would be a faster and more efficient process for when it comes to laying down the paint instead of painstakingly having to make sure to do every single little detail with the gold. And for me that actually worked, for you it might not, so definitely stick with work, what works for you. If you feel that spraying with a turquoise is better, then definitely go for it, especially nowadays where they have primers in pretty much any color that you could possibly think of. So. Here is, so you could see around how it looks, the Retributor Armor with the Temple Guard Blue. The color scheme came out really nice. I wanted the white for the tabards to be nice, clean, and crisp, and I followed that goal, and I'll explain to you how I did that in just a second. And let me continue. All right, so we know Temple Guard Blue and Retributor Armor. Okay, let me tell you about how I shaded the gold, actually. So when I shaded the gold here, I wanted there to be that right amount of shading without the gold looking flat, right? So what I did in order to do that was I did a 50-50 mix of Agrax Earth Shade and Reichland Flesh Shade. And that definitely worked for me. Alright, so that's what I did to shade the gold. And then when I was highlighting it, I used a mix of the Retributor Armor and Model Air in Chrome. This color is on my list of colors that you need in your life. This is an excellent color, especially when it comes to using it for highlighting on metallics and such, okay? So this is not only good in place of white, let's say, to put on a silver, but this also mixes very nicely with other metallic colors in order to lighten it up like white would, okay? But except in a silver, and it still has that right amount of metallic, medium in there and such and it makes it look really nice and smooth so this is definitely a color that you need and that's what I used for the highlighting okay so I'm gonna put that aside so I don't forget when I painted the bolters and when I painted the the blades here on the sword I used the Citadel in Lead Belcha this is a great color this is a great shade of silver for whatever you're using and it's that right shade of silver where it's not too dark it's not too light and gives you enough leeway where you can go either way with it to add to it whether it be highlighting or shading it down okay so that's what I used for that of course to shade all the silver I did use Nuln Oil for the black as well okay when I did the lining in some areas on the Temple Guard Blue on this turquoise color. I used the Druji Violet and a fine detail brush and I went in as if I were lining and that's how I did 
that strong, bold, contrasted lighting, lining rather that you're seeing. And it's because also purple is a wonderful contrast to turquoise and teal. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see that well enough. So I'm going to put that aside. Actually, I almost put the model aside too. It wasn't what I was trying to do. Okay. I did edge highlighting on the black. How I went about doing that was I took this old GW foundation color that I transferred to a dropper bottle forever ago. I think this was Astronomicon Gray, if I remember right. And the permanent marker rubbed off since, but I'm pretty sure it's what it is. But either way, this is a light gray with some blue in it, right? And then what I added to it, now I sat there and I looked at it and I was like, boy, that's a little lighter than I want for the edge highlighting. How am I going to add a bit to it to mute it down, make it a little darker? So what I did in order to do that was I took Secret Weapon Wash and Storm Cloud. And this is another really excellent color to have. It's a really, really nice uh, steel blue type color, if I could show you real quick. Secret Weapon Washes are not only great to use by hand with a brush, but is also great through an airbrush. It shoots really well through an airbrush. It goes over really nicely on metallics if you want to change up the color on your metallic. So just so you, you know, something to think about. The black that I used, this is Reaper Master Series in black, color number not, uh, 09037 in pure black. And you can tell I've used it quite a bit because the label is totally wearing out. It's seen better days, but it gets used quite a bit. And for the runes that you're seeing here on the side, I use the color Baharoth Blue. It's an edge color from Citadel, but it's really great to use for other things as well, such as lining in those rune shades, okay? Now here, you see that there's some yellow in the lines in the stripes there. Now when I did the yellow, you could use Averland Sunset if you want. That's actually a really great GW color. But while I was in the middle of the stream, <laughs> I was too lazy to get up and reach for my Averland Sunset paint. So what I did instead was I had the, my Camara colors right next to me. So what I did instead was I took the mix of the warm yellow and the, and the cold yellow, and I believe I did a 50-50 mix if I remember correctly, and it actually came out to be the same as Averlyn Sunset, but even more highly pigmented, so that was really cool. So that worked out really well and in my favor, thank goodness, and I got just that bright yellow just like I wanted, so that worked out really, really good. And so also, when just so you know, when I lined in between with the yellow and the turquoise there, I also still used that mix of the Agrax Earth Shade and Reikland Flush Shade. And that was what I used for the wash in between on the lining too, and that worked out really, really well. Uh, hopefully you could see it real well here on the staff that there was the, the shading, and then you could see that the Model Air and Chrome, the mix of that and the Retributor Armor worked out really well for the highlighting part right there, okay? Now let's talk about the white. So my goal with the white was that I wanted it to look really bright and I wanted it to look really clean and crisp. And so what I did in order to do that was I used Golden Open Acrylic in Titanium White. This is a slower drying acrylic and it's a heavy, heavier bodied acrylic. It also has higher pigmentation for the white. So that's what I used for that. I did about, I want to say, I wanted to keep going over to make the coating nice and solid. So I want to say I did about three coats, I think, of this golden open acrylic in the titanium white. And then what I did was when I wanted to go over for that final coat to brighten it up and make it really solid, I actually went with the Camara colors in the white. So it sounds it sounds so so strong there. It's the white. It's not like you know a fancy named white. It's just the white, and a little bit of the satin medium, and the white. And then that's how I went over the tabards and the cape to give that clean and crisp, that clean and crisp look there. Really like how that came out. 
and it also took out some of the the brush stroke look that happened from the heavy body acrylic that I did even though I did thin it down some but still because I went over some large surfaces like that cape there was still some brush stroke stuff and so that helped putting that white over it kind of helped smooth that out as well believe it or not so now let's talk about oh what I used to thin down some of the paints. When I sat there and thinned down some of the paints, like the Retributor Armor, the Black, the Temple Guard Blue and such, I used this thinner. It's actually thinner, but I know it has a long name. Acrylic Paint Capillarity Agent. Uh, this is by made by Frontline Games. Not to be confused with Frontline Gaming that's now in uh, Nevada, I believe. So this is a company out of Texas and you can find them at frontline-games.com and they this is their thinner I actually really really like it because it gives that nice silky feel to the paint when you use it so when I don't want when I can't reach for Lamy and medium for the GW stuff I use this and it works just as great another thing a lot of people ask me what else do I use for thinning paint well I have this dropper bottle here which has a mix of its half distilled water and then also there's some Liquitex flow aid in here and I, I just refilled it actually so today's your lucky day you get to see it fill full I mean so that that's what this looks like the other thing that I use let me see what else let's talk about the eyes so there's little eyes and there's some some jewels as you go through well let me see where the one let me pick one that actually has the gems where is he oh there he is so let's pick one that has gems. So we got this guy here, he's got on his knees, and then he's got the eye. And then there's another guy that has a gem behind his head. Where is it? Oh, here it is. That's why I picked him up earlier, because he also has one on the back of his head here, right? So let's talk about how I did those. There is a video, a previous video actually, that I posted, I believe a couple of weeks ago, and the principles work just about the same. Uh, as you know on here as it did on the blood angels that I did and I showed how to paint those gems those drops those blood droplets on a previous video if you scroll down and I basically did the same principles on the eyes and on the gems that are on these guys okay so I started with this is an old GW color like old old like some of you weren't even hobbying yet when this color was out uh, this is red gore that I transferred to a dropper bottle and it's still great to this day this color is at least 10 years old I swear to you and it still works great and then here's GW blood red that was the second color that I used and then for the highlight color, I did Fire Dragon Bright. And then to do that dot, that shining glint, I used the Golden Acrylic in Titanium White. This is really great. You can get this at Michael's and Ho or Hobby Lobby. And if you go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby, don't forget to bring your handy dandy 40% off coupon, okay? Saving money's good, okay? And then what I did also to go around the edges I went around it with Nuln Oil with a fine detail brush as if I were going into line and I did all around it in Nuln Oil and it really helps the gems stand out really nice and then a very important part that a lot of people actually miss believe it or not is gloss varnish I love this is my this one and the GW art code are my favorites in way of the gloss wa uh, the gloss varnishes I mean sorry so this is one that I seriously prefer I absolutely love it so you apply that onto all the gems on those eyes and it gives it that nice amount of shine it makes it look nice and realistic now we shall talk about the bases to start before I put this flock on that you're about to find out about I started off by base coating the bases in Reaper Master Series and Earth Brown and the reason why I did that was because okay so like I told you when I painted over all these in the prep process I did it with Retributor Gold right so what would have happened is if I didn't base coat it with this color the bases then when I put down this flock you would have ended up seeing gold in places and it would have looked really funky right so I started off by doing a couple of coats of the Earth Brown okay and then after I did that I also made sure to do the edges. Now, this is how I do edges for all models that have black around the edges. I use this every time, no matter what, and this mix works well and it handles well for touching, using for gameplay and stuff. 
This is a primer that I absolutely love and I cannot recommend it enough. I mean this truly. And we do have a discount code if you want to purchase it as well. I'll make sure to, you know, put that in the description below and then also have it here on the screen for you. And this is Stino Res. This is by Badger Airbrush. You could use this not only through the airbrush, but you can also use it by hand, which is exactly what I do. So I use this black Stino Res primer and with it, I mix, and, and this is because I, I got a lot of this too. Uh, this is a Vallejo matte varnish, and because I had a lot of the bottles, I condensed them into one of these bigger bottles. Again, you can get this at Michael's or Hobby Lobby, okay? So this is matte varnish, so what I do is I put uh, a few, maybe like three or four drops of this in a well on a palette, and then I put about one drop of the matte varnish in there and then I mix it together and then I go through and I do about two or three coats all the way around on the edges of the base and it handles really well. Stino Res Primer in general just holds really really well and by putting in that varnish it just gives it that extra hold so that way when you touch it for gameplay and stuff it will take longer for the paint to wear off. The paint, either way, because it's acrylic, will wear off eventually. It does with any gaming mini. Usually the corners are always the first to go, but is, you know, over here too, it could eventually wear off, or maybe years will pass and it won't, okay? So after I did those parts with the base coating of the painting, I went through, and so the brown part of the flock that you're seeing here is by Luke's APS and it's in the color deep brown. Let me show you this. Now, just so you know, I put these, transferred the terrain into these containers. It actually comes in a bag, very reasonably priced, okay? I'll be sure to put the website below for you on that as well. Very reasonably priced. And I got these bottles, these containers rather, from, I believe it was Joanne's Fabric, and it comes in a pack of three, I believe a pack of three for five bucks, but they go, but the containers go on sale all the time, so I think I only paid, uh, I paid three dollars, I believe, which made it out to be, uh, I paid one dollar each for the containers to store, and I feel, feel, feel like, I can't talk today, I feel like they store better this way. So this is what the deep brown looks like, okay? So that's by Luke's APS. And then for the green parts, you can see that I randomly put some green, like little grass areas, kind of like they have on the box art if you check it out. And this is another product by Frontline Games, which is the company located in Texas that I told you about. And they have what's called basing system. What I love about these is not only the variety, they have, I th if, I, if I remember right, the line has a variety of like 14 to 16 different ones. But what I like about them is that they look really, really good. So this is the forest floor. They're also very reasonably priced. Each of these tubs of, of the terrain, the basing material, is only $3, which is not bad at all. But here's what forest floor looks like. It's supposed to look as if there's some leaf foliage in, foliage in there and some grass. Okay, so that's what that looks like, and that's how I did some of those little random grass spots, okay? And when you sit there and you see that there's a naked spot, I went back in with a little bit of glue. I used the medium super glue and I put it in the spots where needed and I just filled it in with some green to make it look real nice. Looks like there's a piece of dust. There we go, I got rid of that. But they came out really good. The I'm very happy with them. And the client is also very, very happy with them. So yeah, this is how they came out, and I'm making sure I didn't miss anything. I don't think I missed telling you guys anything, but yeah, so this is how I went about painting these guys. So I hope that this helped you get some suggestions on different things that you can use, different ways that you can go about things and such. Again, like I said, you can catch my process on Twitch while it's still, the videos are still up on Twitch. If I'm not mistaken, I think they're up for like 30 to 45 days, if I'm not mistaken. So definitely be sure to check them out. Follow us.